Today on Applied Science, we're going to take a tour of some unusual magnetic effects, starting with this uh, candle flame that's deflected by a magnetic field, and ending with a hot air stream that's even deflected by a magnetic field. This journey begins in my last video where I was showing that a sodium flame uh, in a, inside a magnetic field will control how much light from a sodium lamp comes through. This is called the Zeeman effect. And someone in the comments pointed out, well, you know, there might be an effect between the flame and the magnets. And so it isn't really Zeeman effect, it's just the flame being affected by the magnet, not really this light absorption. And so I wanted to test it, of course, and searched around. And if you search for it on the internet, you'll find that it does seem pretty likely a candle flame will be affected. And surprisingly, the effect is pretty big. Check it out. This is, I would think, very surprising that, you know, candle flames are pretty common and so are magnets. And you don't really need a crazy strong uh, electromagnet like this. You can use neodymium magnets. And there's a couple of videos floating around on the web showing this effect working with just neodymium magnets. Uh, the effect is real. And before we talk about what's going on there, let's put the Zeeman effect to rest. It almost seems like this is kind of a death knell in that experiment because obviously it's the flame, not the Zeeman effect, that's doing it. So I got a chunk of sodium metal and cut off a little piece and cleaned it as well as I could and put it into a sealed glass tube and connected it up to a vacuum pump and then sealed the end of the tube while it was still under vacuum. So hopefully I have a glass tube with just sodium in it. As expected, if you heat the tube up, the sodium vaporizes and will absorb light from a sodium lamp. Um, if we hold it in front of the sodium lamp, you can see it turns dark in the tube, it's absorbing the light. But if we hold it in front of a white light, uh, it doesn't absorb it, or it's, it's only absorbing that one narrow sodium line. So most of the white light comes through and it doesn't appear to be doing anything. Now, if we put it into the magnetic field and turn the magnet off and on, the effect is super striking. I think it's pretty conclusive evidence that this is, in fact, Zeeman effect. And what's happening is the uh, magnetic field is shifting the spectral absorption line of what's in the tube, but the lamp behind it is not being shifted because it's not in the magnetic field. And so then the emission and absorption lines don't line up anymore, and we get more light coming through the whole system. You do need a pretty killer magnetic field to pull this off. Um, I designed this magnet to have a much larger volume and a larger field strength than the previous uh, setup I was using. So this one pulls about close to 1.4 Tesla with even a 12 or 13 millimeter gap. I'll cover the construction and design details in my next video, which will be on magnetics. I know I said it was gonna be this video, but, but this is too interesting. So let's go back to the flame and see what is going on here. If you search the internet for reasons why a flame would be repelled from a magnetic field, you'll find a couple of theories here and there, but nothing conclusive. So I set about coming up with some of my own experiments to try to figure this out. Uh, clearly the flame is repelled, it's a strong effect. The next thing I tried is just the smoke from a candle, because one of the theories is that the carbon in the flame is actually what's diamagnetic and being pushed away from the field. And we know that uh, pyrolytic carbon or graphite is the diamagnetic. In fact, you can even levitate little chips of carbon over a strong magnet. So it makes sense that the soot in a candle flame, the thing that's actually yellow, is what's being repelled. Okay, so I tried it just with the smoke, and sure enough, the smoke is repelled very well by the magnetic field. So it started to look like case closed. It's like, okay, one or two references on the web, it's the carbon, we know carbon's diamagnetic, the smoke is carbon, and it's also being repelled. So next I wanted to test the flame itself without the carbon. So I got a metal spoon and filled it up with a really small amount of methanol and ignited it so that there was a flame with very little soot. You can see it's burning blue um, with almost no yellowness, no soot or excess carbon. And actually it's deflected by the magnetic field as well. Pretty strong effect, about the same as the candle I'd say. So that kind of blows the theory of it being specifically the carbon. Um, as we'll find out, it's actually multiple things that cause the candle flame to be deflected. One of them is the carbon, but there's also something else that's deflecting it. After a little bit more searching, uh, I started to think maybe it had something to do with the gas content. So we know that the flame exhaust is mostly carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. 
And I also knew that oxygen gas itself was paramagnetic. In fact, there's a great demo where you take some liquid oxygen and dump it onto a magnet and it, it's very clearly pulled towards the magnet. In fact, it even supports itself up in the air if you have uh, two poles of a magnet facing each other like this. Okay, so maybe, you know, carbon dioxide is diamagnetic and that's actually what's being pushed away. So I set up a little apparatus where I could have a gas bubble between the poles of the magnet. And I was expecting to see the bubble either become oblong away from the poles or oblong towards the poles, depending whether the gas was paramagnetic or diamagnetic, relative to the air around it. Remember when we're testing things like this, the air is all around us. And if it has magnetic properties, then what we're measuring is the magnetic properties of what's in the bubble relative to the air. So anyway, so I tried it with almost every gas I had in here. Oxygen, argon, CO2, especially, to see if that was a you know, combustion product thing. And I couldn't see any effect whatsoever. Now, I know that this setup is probably not as sensitive as it could be, because I know if you blow a little bubble of um, oxygen, for example, in a tray of soap water, you can actually push the bubble around or pull it around with a strong neodymium magnet. However, I think this did show that even if we had a um, CO2 gas stream going through the poles of the magnet, it's really not deflecting as much as we saw with the candle flame or the smoke or the um, methanol flame. There's something else still going on that is causing this pretty major deflection. I, I searched a bit more and finally found a pretty good document that uh, proposed multiple theories for why a candle flame is deflected. And one of them, even though it sounds silly, is just that hot air is more diamagnetic than cold air. It almost sounds kind of, you know, too obvious to be correct almost in a way. So I came up with one setup where I had a hot air gun uh, directing a hot air stream up through the magnets. And then I put a piece of paper on top and used my thermal camera to image sort of the pattern of hot air being uh, blown up through the magnets. And this setup did not work. Uh, I think the Airstream had too much speed all by itself. So the next setup I came up with was just to use a really powerful light bulb uh, to heat the air up. It, it's not, the light doesn't matter. It's literally just a heater. And the hot Airstream rises nice and smoothly through the magnets and also heats up a piece of paper that I have suspended up there. And the pattern is very stable. I put up some wind blocks around the experiment and shut the doors and everything. And with the magnets being switched on and off, you can see that it actually does change the course of the heated air. So I went back to the internet and tried to find some references for hot air being more diamagnetic than cold air and found kind of a few things here and there. To be honest, I'm still not exactly sure what this is. It's possible that hot air is less dense than cold air and therefore there's less material in there and maybe that's why it has different magnetic properties. Um, I was thinking maybe a way to test this would be to have like an evacuated cylinder and then suspend that between the magnets and turn the magnet on and off and see if the cylinder orients itself away from the uh, flux lines. Uh, I didn't try that yet but that sounds interesting and then of course do the same thing with a an air-filled cylinder of the same construction. So anyway, I, I thought this was a bunch of interesting stuff, and it's one of those cases where you scratch the surface, and then there's this whole weird story beneath it, and the more you dig, the more you uncover, and it ends up being a pretty interesting sort of story. So in my next video, I'm going to get more, I'm going to, I promise I'll actually do the video on magnetics and designing coils and transformers and stuff. Uh, the problem is that there's a lot of details involved in putting that video together. And I'm not a true expert on magnetics, and so I'll probably get a few things wrong, and I'm trying to um, study up and try to make it as accurate as possible. Okay, see you next time. Bye.